Hi guys, and welcome to the course. Now, after thousands of students have taken this course, I've compiled some of the top tips from the most successful students to help you make the most of your time on the course. So I know what I do with instruction manuals when I receive them, but this is not it because I want to share with you some of the most useful tips that will help you learn to code and get the most out of the course. So first tip is as you go from lesson to lesson in the course, you'll find that each of the lessons should take about 10 minutes long. And this is something that we intentionally designed for the course. Now, a lot of students, when they're watching video tutorials online, very often what people do is they'll watch the video and type along to the code. And this is what we tend to call code along. So the tutorial types a bit, you type a bit, you try to keep up with the pace of the tutorial, or you pause the video every so often to catch up. But essentially you're coding along with the instructor. And this is probably one of the most intuitive ways for people to learn from online tutorials. Now, in order for you to be more successful than most people, what I would recommend is instead to watch the video tutorials, which are usually, as I said, about 10 minutes long. If it's a 20 minute or a 50 minute tutorial, then stop it at around the 10 minute mark. And while you're watching it, instead of spending time trying to frantically type out the code, I want you instead to just try and understand what's going on, why the code is being written and understand the purpose of the code rather than trying to type along at the same pace. Now, once you've understood what those 10 minutes are about, what the tutorial is trying to teach you, then to go to your computer and type out the code and try to replicate what happened in the 10 minutes. Now, the reason why this helps people learn so much better is because instead of just copying code by rote, which doesn't teach you anything, instead it forces you to really understand what's going on and absorb the content and then test yourself afterwards to see if you really understood. So this is my number one top tip. And it's important to remember that we are learning programming. We're not learning how to type fast. It doesn't help you become a better programmer by just copying out code as fast as you can. If you wanted to practice your typing and to speed up your typing skills, then I recommend something like Kiba.com where you can focus on that specific skill to improve your speed of typing. But what we're gonna focus on in the course is learning programming. So we're gonna keep our eye on the prize. Now, while you're listening to the videos and you're understanding what's going on, I recommend taking a few notes for yourself to come back to or review in the future. And this is especially useful after when those 10 minutes are up and you're trying to remember what are those bits of code that you had to type and what was the theory that was covered. So one of my favorite note-taking systems is something called Cornell Notes. And it's very, very simple. It just splits a single note page into four sections. The top, you have the topic, what the notes are about. And then you have the section of notes where you would write down the majority of your notes. Now, after you write a few lines, it's recommended that you go and review those notes and pick out the most important keywords or questions that you're asking yourself that you want to research on later or any sort of hints or reminders to yourself. And finally, once you've completed the lesson, then you go to the summary section and you summarize what the entire lesson was about in a few bullet points. So I've created a downloadable PDF of this note taking system. So if you're keen to try it out, go ahead and download it from the course resources section and you can print it out um, into a notebook or just on a few loose sheets if you want to try it out. Now, the next thing to remember is that if I'm talking too fast or too slow, you can always change the playback speed. Now, if you're in a lesson that you find particularly easy to understand and you already know most of the concepts, then go ahead and switch the video player to double speed so that you can cover much more ground in the same space of time. Now, on the other hand, if I'm talking too fast or if English is not your first language, then feel free to change the speed to half speed so that I talk a lot slower and you can take up the information more 
readily. But it's important that you try to not skip any of the tutorials and any of the modules. And the reason is because the curriculum was carefully designed so that it would be a smooth sloping ramp so that you start out at the beginning and you slowly make your way through more and more difficult concepts. Now, if you skip a couple of modules, then it makes it really, really hard for you to catch up and to understand what's going on, which is the most important thing. However, some of the videos I will label with optional or skippable. And in that case, feel free to skip those lessons if they don't interest you. Now, the next thing to remember is that if you find at any point the tutorials become harder and they inevitably will be, they're designed to get harder and harder. But if you find that it's a little bit too difficult, then I recommend just bookmarking it, making a note of which module you really struggled with and trying to use that method of watching the videos for 10 minutes, reviewing what has been taught, trying to replicate the code yourself. But if you're still stuck and you really don't understand what's going on, then that might be something that you have to come back to. So I find that usually with programming concepts, it helps to try it out, read around the topic and then come back to it after a week or so. And very often what was very, very difficult first time you come across it, after you've done it a few times, after you've researched around the topic and then you come back to it, it becomes a lot easier. So remember to mark things for review that you don't understand. Now, recently I went to learn windsurfing in uh, Mykonos and it's a skill that I've never had before. It's something that I found incredibly challenging and I fell on my face during the entire lesson pretty much. And it hurt a lot. I got battered and bruised and my ego got bruised a lot as well. But this is exactly what it's like when you try to learn a new skill. So it's important that you persevere and continue to put in the hours to practice and to try and try again because you can learn something very superficially just by watching a video or you know trying it for a few hours but in order to master a skill the most important thing is practice now the final thing is that I will say it now, you will get stuck at some point because everybody does. And in fact, I wish that Hollywood would stop making movies where programmers are just typing away like some sort of frenzied hacker person. Because most of the programmers I know who actually do this as a job, they spend probably 90% of their time just staring at the screen, trying to figure out what is wrong? Why is it not working? So getting stuck is very much a universal part of programming, something that you have to come to even love and enjoy. So when you do find yourself stuck, I want you to imagine that you're already a fully fledged developer working a job where somebody's paying you to do this for them because you're the professional. So I want you to use the tools that professional programmers use when they get stuck. And that is Google and Stack Overflow. You try to figure it out, try to see what did other people do? Because 99% of the time, you won't be the first person who's come across that problem. It's very likely that somebody's experienced it before and other people have helped them to solve that problem or help them understand what it is that they're stuck on. And the thing to remember is that struggling is good. In that moment when you finally spot that typo or finally figure out why it is that your code isn't working and you fix it, that is one of the best feelings in the world. So struggle is good and it really is through the struggles that you actually improve and level up your skills. So I'm so excited to be on this journey with you and I look forward to all of your success in the future.